what is interesting, I remember you and I used to live together in Brick Lane, and I came home from work one day and Rob said to me, um, I'm going to buy a boozer, do you want to move in with me? And uh, I'm glad I did, because it was an absolute adventure. It was just somewhere to go for like a really good party. I heard the voice about you were going, Rob were going to open a, a pub. Uh, and I was like, wow, if this guy doing this party is going to open a pub, I want to be there. I want to get involved. Uh, we used to do mullet over after parties here back in uh, the beginning. Um, I think it was a pub then, but it was kind of like stroke club. Do you remember when we first opened, we didn't even have many tables, chairs. I come in to, to have a look at the kitchen and just, there was nowhere to sit. <laughs> yeah, three wooden tables and some puff things. Some, some puff things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there were people coming in and it's like, what is this place? Is it open? What are you guys doing here? <laughs> I mean, all openings are chaotic. This definitely had maybe a bit more than its fair share of chaos. Last July we had Arcade Fire do their after party here and then Woody Harrelson come to the bar and ordered a Dark and Stormy and I was a bit like, ah, okay. My favourite memory here was um, at a quiz on Tuesday night and the Dean was hosting that. And this guy decided he was going to go out and make noises like a whale and he actually won on the clapbometer, you know what I mean? I think Dave's one of those people, when you talk to him and spend time with him, he's just such an amazing human being, and mad as a box of frogs, but the best people are. Well, like Mario's kind of uh, someone who I think has been a big character here from, from day one, and I think um, still kind of, you know, his, his spirit still resonates throughout the place. But, but do you remember when we found a wheelchair? I mean, someone came here on a wheelchair and he left without the wheelchair. It was um, the time there was piss leaking through the ceiling. <laughs> That's pretty bad. We're going to cut that bit. Milo? Did he, did he say one? Am I just picking names from thin air? <laughs> one of my favourites was Eddie, the cleaner. I'd like to think we can get him back for a little 10th anniversary. And I did used to find him asleep on his on his mop sometimes, <laughs> just snoozing. I, Eddie, so I have to give him a bit of a nudge. I'm pretty sure it was your birthday, and basically me and Bones thought it'd be a good idea to get you some champagne, which <clears throat> um, we got from your own fridge, brought it upstairs, and you were well chuffed. And then like, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> yes. Uh. There's never a dull moment on this road. There's always something happening. There's always someone, you know, with an interesting story to talk to. Yeah, the geese with the butcher across the road, it'd been here for God knows how long. And the mad couple that ran the uh, fruit and veg store, they used to, used to have a value sandwiches for lunch, remember her? Slightly right wing, but quite funny. What I like about this place is the way they're, they're keeping it as it was, as it was. I have to say, ten years on, whether I go to the Star of Bethel Green, to the Star of Kings, Star by Hackney Downs, I'm always treated really nicely and respectfully and I don't really have an issue with anyone and it's, it's really nice and refreshing. So well done mate, keep it up. This place has always just kind of moved along, I'm not trying to be fresh or I just think it's just a good, good warm place and keep it as it is. It's not broken, don't fix it, you know. We are just here to have a good fun, we have a good time, just create a kind of a vibe that people want to be a part of. I think without this pub in Bethnal Green, Bethnal Green wouldn't be what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the people that make the pub. <laughs>